is the tragedy of Starfield, the unfinished, as bad as people say? Let's find out. This game is bad as people are making it out to be. Here's, here's the thing about this game. I feel the same way about this game as I do the hundreds of times I have talked about janky games on this channel. Let me tell you, let me tell you what I mean by that. There are certain things in life that offer both good and bad things, it's not just gaming. Lots and lots of things in life. Parts of something will be good, parts yeah. of something will be bad. Yeah. It what that sense. means is that when you approach that thing, item, concept, whatever it is, just like a lot of things in life, you can find what you want to out of it. Okay. So if you approach this game and you're looking for big open worlds and tons of items and lots of interesting places to explore. And uh, yeah. I mean, this is kind of true. Probably, to an extent. Yeah. Like, if you go in a garbage can, you might be able to find something that's edible. You could eat something that might even taste good. But yeah. you could also go in a garbage can and find something that tastes yeah. like shit because it's rotten and it should be in a garbage can. Like, let me explain the very first 10 minutes of Starfield for anyone who hasn't seen it, okay? So, you start off as a miner, right? You're called Dusty. That That's, that's very cute, by the way, Bethesda. And... Well, when you start the game, guess what happens? Nothing! This is the slowest starting game I have ever seen in my life, you know? Absolutely without question. The moment that woman talks, the elevator takes 50 years too long. The walk from the elevator to the next location takes 50 years too long, okay? And when you finally get the mining tool, you know, you, 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 guess what happens? Now you're introduced to the mining stuff, but you can't actually press F to use the, uh, use the scan thing. So, you actually don't, uh, you actually can't even use the, uh, the full set of tools that you are given in the game. And after that, well, you start mining them, and you need to go further. And again, that miner lady takes 15 years to move to the location of the chamber. So that happens. And guess what after? Guess what after happens that? Well... Uh, the location with the uh, with with the object as a fragment are we gonna call it fragment is it a chamber that's actually full of different kind of material well there's two materials full of ores and you're like are these rare ores the the, the because the name sounds kind of rare so should I mine them so you spent literally like five minutes mining all the ores around. Uh, the fragment's location before you actually start mining the fragment. That is one of the absolutely worst openings in a game ever. It is slow, it is boring, and it actually convolutes you on should you be mining these things. Because the game taught you that you should be mining these things, right? That they're expensive. It literally tells you that they're expensive. And then... You don't know if you're supposed to do the main thing and touch the object, or you're supposed to mine everything around it first because that's worth money. That is how bad in the first... Oh yeah, and one of the... Uh, and after you need to go out, and one of your quests is put on the helmet. Which is stupid, because you have no idea where to put on the helmet. You open up your inventory, you open up this, and there's a chance you're gonna miss it. I literally took like three, two minutes, two to three minutes finding on where the hell do I put on my stupid helmet. Yeah, that's not a good start to a game. And when the start to a game is that bad, how do you think the rest of the game is going to work out? Yeah, not great probably, huh? But if you look in a refrigerator... There's probably going to be a better ratio of things that might taste a little bit better. But even if you go in a garbage can, you will find some things that taste good. And cool shipbuilding mechanics and, you know, some decent companions, stuff like that. Shipbuilding doesn't matter. Ship combat is stupid. What you're going to get, you're going to have a good time. If you approach this game looking for wide open empty spaces, bugs, uh, stoic faces and, and dialogue that sometimes isn't great. Not really an immersive... Oh, 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 that's actually... I've, I forgot to add more things. Like, again, th this is literally the first five minutes of the game. Um, 
the fact that your laser, the fact that you're so bored, you want to start shooting people with the mining laser. Because that's literally what happens. The conversations are too long. Way too long, in fact. And they're boring. There's nothing in them. And honestly, um, for a role-playing game, like, again, this is literally, I'm just, I'm just talking about the first pretty much ten minutes of the game. And the conversations, honestly, for the role-playing game are shit. Okay, they're shit. You know why? Because you can't even hide. You can't even try and role-play and hide the fact that you saw nothing. You know, uh, when you touch that thing. Now uh, all your options are: Wow, it was amazing! Wow, I'm the chosen one! Wow, it was amazing times two. Those are your options. Okay, or 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 be stupid and ask what it was. There is no option to try and pretend that nothing happened, okay? Which is, I feel like, an option a lot of people would love to click on. And the reality of how bad the conversations is just open up in the, fir uh, in the first time you actually get to speak with the, with the guy who becomes a miner in your place, when, uh, when they don't actually, like, give you a good reason to go to the constellation. Like, you have... They, they force you. They don't give you a good enough reason to actually even want to go there. Like, they just don't. They, uh, the, the whole game is based on the idea that you just will want to do that. Not that you, not that they convince you. Again, that's how bad the game is. The world, because people are constantly throwing player-oriented stuff at you that makes it obvious it's a game. You're gonna have. You're gonna find that too. Oh no, I didn't say about the mining laser. You start shooting people with the mining laser. First, they don't have a reaction. Then they just fall off. And you know the main characters, the, the laser just goes through, which makes it stupid. Yeah. So, the thing yeah. about them like this is that it brings True. out both sides of the conversation. It and does, it does. I think he's right about this. I mean, Starfield has some positive things to it. Uh, Phew. You know, like, in terms of, like, making a ship. Uh, no Man's Sky, it seems like No Man's Sky, you have probably more agency to make interesting ships. However, Starfield has a much more realistic graphic style. So I think that people might want to make ships in Starfield more because of that. They look more real, you could say. Uh, I mean... I guess, yeah, but then again, the, 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 the ship in Starfield is a decoration, and it serves no practical or real purpose. You can't really fly it, and space combat is literally dog. Okay, but, uh, oh, and I'm sure there's other things too, right? I mean, people like the stories, etc. So I, I get that. I think he's right. Sure. Both right. And I think that's one of the reasons that people no are such a problem with this go? game is we because can get a bunch of this can be a pretty right? bad game if you just yeah. focus on the stuff that you don't like about it. It can also be a pretty great game if you just I focus like on the stuff that you like about it. So, like, I think it's oh, that's a cheap uh, uh, cough out, dude. Like, come on, oh, just focus on the good stuff. Sure, okay, yeah. Uh, you say about almost any game, but I think he's, he's right. I mean, there's a lot of people that play Starfield. Here's the truth, right? Is that there are people that love Starfield. Because it's there a Bethesda are. game. They think the game boys. is great. They think it is it is their game of the year. I'm not saying that it's the game of the year. I'm saying... And those people are insane. By the way, Starfield already has like 50 mods that actually make the game better. And they're super min minute and, you know, whatever. But the problem is they're mods. And if it takes a mod at five minutes to make a mod like that, why hasn't Bethesda uh, made it in the base game? Saying it is their game of the year. There are people who love Dark Souls 2. Now, how... It, like, in my wasn't mind, game of the I year cannot now? comprehend somebody thinking Dark Souls 2 is a good game. I can comprehend somebody enjoying playing the game, right? And I enjoyed okay. playing through it, and they thought some of the bosses were interesting, the world was cool. Yeah, sure. But to say that it's a good game, that's a whole different situation. And you can say that you enjoyed the game, that's a whole different situation. But to say that it's a good game, well, that's something different, okay? okay. So I get 
what Co Carnage is saying. I, I, I agree with him, right? Is that there are games out there that have a lot of good and a lot of bad. And you want to know a game like that? World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is like this. And if you play... I mean, I, I'll just flat out disagree. Some elements of the game, the worst aspects of the game are so evident and so obvious. However, whenever you go and you just play, you do what you want to do, do mount farming, transmog, maybe do like a heroic raid, play casually, etc. You'll probably enjoy yourself a lot more than if you try to focus on playing the game in like the most hyper optimized way. Diablo 4 is kind of the same thing, but there's not really as many ways to play the game, so it's not exactly the same. Well, Diablo 4 has only one way to play the game, and that way has a bunch of pitfalls in it, so, you know, it is what it is. I'm trying to think of some other games that are a little bit like this. Um, I think basically any open world game, anything like this, uh, Elden Ring or whatever, uh, you can play the game. <laughs> Instead of muting the sound like... I, I, I paused the video, no problem. ...and not have a good time if you're not really trying to have a good time, or if you're doing things that you don't really want to do. And that's one of the double-edged swords of having these, like, really wide, expansive games, is that pe I wouldn't call Starfield a really wide, expan... <laughs> expansive game honestly people will go into an expansive game it's like people like it's like you put them in a room full of cakes and fucking uh, uh like a you, you give them like a massage chair but there's a fork on the ground next to an outlet i i am i the only one who kind of completely doesn't understand the point that he's going for yeah every game has its good and bad parts but and that doesn't matter because most games are not branched enough that you have 50 different activities that are so different from each other that it's gonna matter. And like Diablo 4, I don't know which activity is supposed to be the good one, honestly, in this case. Because the, the game is just one activity at the end of the game. In Starfield, you can kind of, like, you know, say that this has two activities. Well, three activities. Okay, let's let's say exploration is one of them. Because you, you can waste a lot of time running around the planet, achieving nothing and collecting shit, right? And then there's combat. And then there's talking to people. Kind of three fundamentally different things, I would say, that don't overlap enough, but each of them is kind of stupid. Running around the planet aimlessly collecting all the flora and fauna, stupid and boring. You know, uh, combat depends on what kind of gun you have. Again, I said this from the very start. If you, if you need a hundred bullets to kill a basic mob, well, you're having a bad time. If you don't need a hundred bullets to kill a basic mob, you don't have a good time. But then again, I'm a stealth player. And it seems like Bethesda is uh, trying to ruin stealth with every single game that they release for some stupid reason, okay? Uh, in... Which was the... Uh, which was the game? Oh, yeah. In, in, Fa in Fallout 4, uh, everything was about... Power armor. The whole gameplay was literally designed about power armor. So if you were not playing power armor, uh, power armor, and you were playing stealth character, chances are Molotov is gonna actually one shot you. Okay? And guess what happened? Well, a lot of enemies just throw Molotovs in the direction of that the shot came from. If you if you're not really quick and move out of the way, okay? And in Starfield, you know, well, you know what Bethesda did with stealth. I'm not going to complain about the, the fact that you need to actually pick a fucking stupid road in or cyber runner or whatever stupid perk that has stealth at level 1. No. It, it's the fact that you can't even move while stealthed. Because you're draining your oxygen meter? Yeah, I bet you didn't notice that one, huh? You're draining your oxygen meter? And it doesn't refill while you're not moving. Why? Is that a thing? Okay. Why? Why? It's so stupid. Because I, I was, I was so confused when I started playing the game. I was like, what, what is this thing that if, that if I stopped running or whatever, constantly happening to me? 
Turns out it was stealth. Turns out stealth was draining my oxygen meter. Well played, Bethesda. And this dipshit manages to electrocute himself. Well, why can't you just sit in a massage chair? Well, why'd you put the fork there? What the hell did you think I was gonna do? And that's just how some people are. Is that they will g g pursue the thing that they don't like just to prove it to themselves that they don't like it. They're eating shit and they're like, I knew this was gonna taste bad. Give me another one. And yes, this is a risk that these uh, wide open games have. And you with Wu Wong? Wu Wong was garbage. That was a garbage game. I'm not gonna fucking hear anything about it besides that. That was a trash game. It was one of the worst games I've ever fucking played. But anyway, uh, it actually was not one of the worst games I've ever played. That's not true. It was not a good game. Uh, it's worse than Starfield. I would say it was worse than Starfield. Mm. And uh, anyway, I go back, talk about that a whole lot. It doesn't fucking matter. The point is that with Starfield, I don't think Starfield is a three. I don't think it's like a one. I don't think it's a nine either. Obviously. For me, it's like a four, five, or six. Like that's what I would say. It's a Yeah, four. I'm gonna lower my you know, I'm I'm lowering my stuff also. At at the start I was like, Yeah, Starfield's a seven. Why seven at the best days, why not? But now now that some people on that ironically are gonna but gonna put it eight, nah, nah, man, start feels like a five or six at the best of days because this is just no, no. Four, five, or six is somewhere in the middle. I say it's probably like if I had to go somewhere, I'd say it's probably somewhere around a five. And the reason why that I think it's about a five is simply because the I don't fix appreciate. It. What Starfield is. I don't care what Sarah has to say. I don't care about how she feels about being a pilot and this problem where she was a captain and had to make a hard choice with like oh, no. trying to save people. Like, I don't give a fuck what the hell her problem is. I don't care about her. Who the fuck is this? Just uh, get, did I give her a gun? Well, then go shoot these guys. Like, go f uh, fucking flank them. I'm gonna try to shoot him here, right? I married her? Well, I'm gonna marry her too, because it gives me 15% experience, and that's the only fucking reason. Like, I'm just not I'm just not about that kind of stuff. I don't think, I think the story, if I were to describe the story, and I'm sure somebody is gonna say, Oh, but you didn't do the other campaign, and if you had done this other questline, you'd totally feel differently about it, and you don't really understand, and uh, you, you know, you can't... If you finish a game and you and people are telling you, oh, you needed to find X, then the game f becomes good. Oh, you needed to do Y, and then the game becomes that. That just means the game's bad in general. It is what it is. Expect the obvious request. Now nah, shut the fuck up. Ah, shut the fuck up. I did about thirty to fifty quests in the game. That's a lot. And I'd say I think two of them, maybe, I know one. I'm betting maybe another one I forgot about was good. But other than that... Hey, if you forgot I about it. thought that the quests weren't that great. And if I were to describe the narrative in Starfield with one word, it's that bad. word would be safe. I think it is a very oh, safe Oh, that's also story. true. It's a very... Yeah, but you see, no hookers. You can't, you, you literally cannot blow off chunks of people it's it's stupid very vanilla story it's not exciting to me it's not edgy it's not groundbreaking it's just safe yeah and, and safe is boring bad. there's a lot of people that like safe but i like seeing crazy shit happen i do and so whenever i play the game and none of that stuff happens in a way that I want it to, I guess. Then I don't really get the vibe. And I don't really enjoy it a lot. And so that's why I always tried to... I hesitated whenever I first played the game a lot. Because I didn't really want to shit on the game. Because I didn't feel like I was the target audience for the game. Does that make sense? Because no, you're lying. Previously you said that you don't want to uh, be negative about the game. When you, when you, was because, well, you hadn't played enough about it, and now you're saying you were, well, one of these at least is a lie.
I think he's just. I think he just didn't know v which way the wind bl uh, was blowing. Is the game gonna be received positively or mostly negatively by the community? That's what I think, honestly. Because again, well, some people just can't put their foot down. They they need to see which way the wind blows. Because. There's a whole audience of people that loves. Because there's a lot of people who like like Starfield, and they're called Bethesda band fanboys. They're still playing Skyrim. They're still playing. They love Fallout. Yep. They can't wait for the new. And I'll probably play the Oblivion Sky Oblivion thing too. Personally, I mean, I probably Sky will Oblivion. because I played Oblivion when I was a kid. But what did I do in Oblivion? The same fucking thing I did in Starfield. Exploit shit and kill around and kill people, take their shit. That's it. I just want to be a murder hobo. I don't even want to build... I, the only reason I built a base is because I needed to get experience. You think I give a fuck about a base? No. Why would I care about a base? I want to go to somebody else's base, get their shit. I gotta... I, I live on my spaceship. Fuck them, man. And so that's the way that I... I want to play video games. That's, that's what I like. So whenever there's like a very narrative-driven story with a lot of nuance to it and you know, player choice matters, and there's these really fleshed out NPCs, this doesn't really fucking matter to me that much. Now, there are games that it does, and I don't want to say that this is something- I mean, were there really fleshed out NPCs? I don't know about that one, Chief. Something that I just like uh, categorically dislike or I'm not into, because the truth is there are games that I do feel that way about, but Starfield just didn't really appeal to me in that way. Okay. And True. I've never really been a fan of like Bethesda games, and I also never really said that I wasn't a fan. They just never really appealed to me that much. So whenever I see Starfield, and I I mean this is the most safe speech I have seen in my life. And there are people that just absolutely fucking hate it. Now I'm not a Bethesda fanboy, but you know I I kind of am. <laughs> <laughs> there are people that absolutely fucking love it. I'm really just in the middle. I think it's a decent game. I want to play it and, you know, like, there's all these traits. I want to see, like, how, what kind of stupid shit I can do in the game. Because I think it's interesting, right? That's one of the cool things about a game like Starfield is that I, I it guess, is, there's a lot of open-endedness to it. And the open-endedness that... creates gameplay, at least for somebody like me, like me that I like to Oh, 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 oh. I, I understand what he means. He doesn't actually mean the game's, like, open-ended, because it's hell not open-ended, you know? Uh, there's only two ways to solve every every situation in Starfield. You either shoot someone or you speak uh, speak to them. Uh, and, you know, there's, there, there's nothing that can influence that. You just choose which one you want. The open-endedness of the game is what he is referring to at the moment. Is the fact that you can do a lot of different things with your build. Like, how do you want to, uh, how do you want to do combat? Do you want to speech checks? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And in that sense, yeah, the game is replayable for sure. Things I like to limit break things and do stupid shit that I shouldn't be able to do. I like exploiting games. I don't like cheating in games. So I'm not really the audience for this kind of stuff. Right? I'm not. But I'm not. I, I don't think that makes it a bad game. Starfield sucks in the discussion. Well, people don't Pretty like much. it. I get that. I'm going to tell you all the time. Uh, well, admittedly, I say Starfield sucks, but I'm going to play Starfield today at some point, probably. Because it, it, the Bethesda games are just, you know, they can be shit. I, I, I wasn't a fan of Skyrim, but I still ended up playing it for like 50 hours or something like that. And that's because Bethesda games can be trash, but they're just kind of playable, you know? The first time I played Starfield, I only played for like 45 minutes, and then I was tired of this bullshit. But that didn't stop me from playing again for 45 minutes <laughs> the next day. It's just playable. So. If Starfield wasn't an Xbox exclusive and it released on every console, twice as many people would be talking shit about it. Yep. Half of the people running defense for Starfield are got just it doing it free. because they're Xbox fanboys. Yep, and they got it Go for Go ahead free. and look at some of the popular tweets that people make. Look at their accounts, look at their profile, look at what they post. It's all Xbox fanboy shit. And so these people are just playing teamism. They're just playing on the same team as Starfield because their magic black box is better than the other magic black box that's made by the other company. Yep. Get the much. fuck out of here. 
It's a stupid And y'all see this too, right? Like, I'm not imagining this. No, no, no. I, I said this previously already. You've been on Twitter. You've seen these. And now you actually... Oh, actually, it's true. You have the Bethesda fanboys plus the Xbox fanboys who got the game for free, almost. Free. Because they have already spent way more money in the bat in the game pass than they have actually gotten value from it you know it's true people that are defending starfield like fucking crazy and like you go and like i got called a uh, let me see how i find some motherfucking thing oh, look 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 let me see I, I find one right now this is just a random one i can maybe get so i make a tweet about something and then george foreman <laughs> this is not pony. the guy with the grill okay <laughs> this is just the guy he says you little pony punk now, what does pony mean? PlayStation pony, pony right? yes. And so I get people tweeting this shit at me all of the time. Yep. And so I went and I looked at his profile because I do that. It's like going to the zoo. And so let's take a look. Let's see what's going on here. Not a lot. Posting about Starfield. A retweet of an interview of people talking about Starfield. It's obvious how it is a huge chunk of the Starfield hate just wouldn't exist if this was a platform list. So there you go. It's another person. Somebody that takes about the state of Xbox. Right. I mean, we, we laugh about people, you know, dedicating their lives to follow the Kardashians, right? But how is this different? It's not. It's literally the same thing. It happens for everything. If something exists... You're literally gonna have some extremely dedicated people being crazy. This channel started off as though the channel like five years ago, by the way. Well, more than five years ago at this point, I think. I still, after all that time, have people who sometimes uh, comment, Hey, when are you gonna play Dota? It's insanity. Right? Th this is, these, are, these are Xbox fanboys that are sitting here running defense for this fucking game and I, it seems like a bot account it's not bro this guy is yeah, those a real, are real he's people. a real person he's a real yeah. boy and there's a lot of them he's probably 37 but he's a real boy and so that's how he acts and this is like this is like literally like you, this dude a thousand years ago would have been on like the front lines for his king going out to war against like the fucking crusaders with a rake you know like this is the this is the kind of person what? that do that kind of shit right and now he's going out to war with a fuck for a fucking console <laughs> Lord, i yeah. mean half of that is technically true i have to agree and the thing is though and it's nothing about xbox fanboys and they're not special well they are but they're not uniquely special. The Sony fanboys are the same fucking thing. And they shit on Starfield <clears throat> way more than they need to. By the way, th this girl is 182 centimeters tall. I'm 183 centimeters tall, which is like six, six or six one, you, you, you little midgets. Um, yeah, if she has heels, I'm gonna climb a tree. It's gonna be fun. Because it's not on the PlayStation 5. Those would have been the people with the rakes from the other king that were on the front lines. And, and you know, maybe they got a shovel. The whole discourse around Starfield, and also, oh, oh, you put all of this, all of this is under the context of the American social culture war. Oh my God. And you don't want to be in the middle of that because Starfield had the audacity to add pronouns to the game. And I'm not talking about Z, Zer, you know, like we were, like these other weird pronouns you've never heard of. It's his, hers, and theirs. And I understand if you don't want pronouns in the game. I'm not even making an argument whether this is a good or a bad thing. It's a bad thing, end of story. So please, guys, I know that you're typing right now about why it's good or bad. Please understand. Hey, I said this. Life is a slippery slope every single fucking time. Yes, there have been people who have gotten into hard drugs because of weed. 
It's a slope, okay? And this is the same thing. It's the first they start with the pronoun shit, and after uh, and you know after three games, uh, two hours in, you 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 have a choice between do you uh, do they cut off your gentles and you become trans, or the game ends right there because they just brutally execute your character. That that that's how these things work. That your message is gonna go into oblivion. Nobody's gonna read it, and nobody cares. So just do yourself a favor. Now, what I was gonna say though, is that because Starfield was the kind of game that has now been made a battleground for the American culture war, people like or dislike the game, or defend or don't defend or attack the game based off of that one fact. Just like Hog. So essentially he's saying because of that now, that, uh, now the uh, amount of people who have liked Starfield has tripled at least. <laughs> or it's legacy, just like, um, oh fuck, let's see, uh, we got probably a few other games like this, uh, Diablo- Hogwarts Legacy is not actually true, it was a pretty quick thing and the, the amount of normies that like, uh, like Harry Potter and played the game was absolutely huge. They didn't care at all about the thing. Four was kind of like this. Uh, Forspoken was a little bit like this. Uh, I, I think that's probably like maybe I think of one more game that turns into like a, a, a Atomic Heart. That's a great example. And so these Atomic games have Heart? now been identified. Final With Fantasy the Robo 16 mummies? A yeah, there's a bit of that, but like again, just a bit. And uh, these games, and none of these games, by the way, really give a fuck about this stuff, right? It's like these developers just don't want to probably deal with it or they have like a few people that are like really into this kind of shit and so they just put it in the game. I don't know. But the point that I'm making is that whenever a game is determined to be on one side of that culture war or not, well then people have already- Why are we talking about the culture war again? Already had their opinion on the game decided for them. Because at this point, do you like pronouns? You don't? Well, then you hate Starfield. Do you like pronouns? Do you think that you should have 50 different pronouns? I mean, that's a very, very brutally moronic uh, American opinion about these things. The reality is different. The people who like pronouns are, you know, deficient, as we all know. Uh, they're gonna love and cherish something just because it's their agenda. But people who dislike pronouns are gonna complain about it. But they're not gonna, you know, just drag the game. Well, at least, well, 80% of those people are not gonna drag the game just because it has it in there. They're gonna be mad that it is there, but it's not like the whole game is gonna suffer because of it. Well, then you. The other side is the one that boycotts, uh, boycotts things instantaneously because the thing happens. Again, uh, Hogwarts Legacy was the uh, a perfect example of that. One side, because there weren't going to be pronouns, literally asked that game to be removed, the people who made it executed, and, you know, all of that stuff. The other side said, well, shit. I, gu I, 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 I guess whatever. You know? And one side didn't play it at all. There's a difference. This is just a, you know, moronic opinion of American right here. Who doesn't understand how anything happens. Love Starfield. Starfield is great. Get with the times. You're on the wrong side of history. And so, so much. Well, in any case, I think we're done here because I, I, I don't want, I don't want my brain to melt with Asmongold talking about politics. You know, it's already bad enough. Anyway, this was Quizzer Sense and thanks for watching. Subscribe, have already, and have a nice day. Bye bye.